Lightroom has recently released some AI removal features into the program, but are they actually good? Let's take a look and find out. In this example here, let's go and remove the sandals from this photo. But using the previous removal adjustments inside of Lightroom would have made this process pretty darn difficult because there is a lot of different textures and things that some of the tools in Lightroom don't do a great job of managing. So previously, I would have brought this into Photoshop and used something like the clone stamp tool to remove. But now with AI, let's see how it works. To access this AI feature, we'll click on the remove tool, set the mode to remove, and make sure that generative AI is enabled. Enabled. Now you just need to go and paint around the object that you want to remove. So I'll paint around the sandals, the shadow, and give a bit of wiggle room around the entire object. Anything that is within this red highlight, once we click apply, will now be filled using AI. So I'll click apply. Once it's complete, it will fill that area with an AI adjustment. So zooming in, let's take a closer look at these adjustments. Overall, the textures and the lines look really good. Even the bottom of the tent looks good as well. However, in some cases, you might not be happy with how the first variation looks, which is why you get three different variations to choose from with this tool. So within the remove panel, you'll notice the variation setting. We can just click on the arrow to cycle the different variations that the AI has created for us. Generally, I've been finding that the first variation tends to be a lot better than the other two for some reason, but maybe that's just me. If all of the variations aren't looking very good, you can click on refresh and this is going to load three new variations for you. Once again, going through the different variation options by clicking on the arrows, you can find something that works for your image. So with that complete, I'll exit the remove tool setting and looking here where the sandals were, I would say that's a really convincing final image. Looking at our before and after, the quality is pretty comparable. All of the lines are rebuilt quite well. Although there is a little bit of blurriness around the tent, this is not something that I would totally notice. To be fair, this example is a relatively simple one for AI to do since the textures are very defined, there's simple edges around the photo, and there's no people or arms within the image because that is where AI really messes up. So let's go into another more complex image to see how it fares because at this point I'm impressed but let's go and test it a little bit further. In this next image there's a lot more going on between textures as well as a bit more grain and we also have a person which is where AI starts to mess things up. In this image, let's say I want to remove this blade of grass that got in front of my lens while taking this photo. Generally, you don't want to go and create one giant adjustment using these AI tools because it's going to have a harder time. So I'm going to break this up into a few different sections. Going to the remove tool setting, I'll click on the remove mode and enable generative AI once again. And of course, I'll just go and scale up that brush and paint over the first bit I want to remove. Since I painted a little bit too much, I'll click on subtract and then subtract from that selection area so that the mask is a little bit tighter to that blade of grass. I'll click apply and now Lightroom will generate something for me to remove this grass. Upon first look here, that looks pretty decent. However, the quality between the original grass and the AI grass is pretty noticeable as well as the texture between the tree and the AI tree. Even if we cycle between the different variations, we have some slightly better results, but similar patterns continue where the textures are just not quite right. But for now, I'll just leave this set to the first variation and we'll continue on around the image. Now let's go and try to remove this other blade of grass from the photo. To prove a point, I'm going to just go and click and drag over this other area of the grass that also includes a bit of our subject's hands. I'll refine this mask to remove a bit of the handlebars as well as below in the foliage to give the mask the best possible chance. Since the AI is also going to take into consideration these extra lines on our subject's shirt, I'm going to add these into the mask so that the AI is going to remove those for me rather than trying to create some new design instead on my subject's shirt. So with this looking good to go, I'll click apply and we'll see what happens. 
Looking in the background of the subject, that looks pretty decent, as well as the trees up here. They're a bit lower quality, but still not too bad. However, where things go crazy is around the handlebars and the subject's fingers. This is something that AI just cannot seem to deal with currently, as well as it has completely removed any of the natural noise and grain that was in the original photo around my subject's shirt. So this makes it super, super obvious if the hand wasn't obvious enough that that some major adjustments have been done here. So this is the primary limiting factor of the generative AI removal features inside of Lightroom and Photoshop as a whole at this current stage. I'm sure that this will get figured out in the future, but for now, you can't really rely on it as your go-to do everything remove tool. This blade of grass that was around my subject's chest would have been easier to remove using something like the remove tool, the healing brushes, or even colored brushes using the color blending mode inside of Photoshop to blend everything in. Now, of course, it's outside of the scope of this tutorial, but all I'm saying is that there's other options that you could use outside of generative AI to remove objects from more complex backgrounds, and you wouldn't end up with completely weird extremities, and you would still be able to get a reasonable match in texture between your removed area and your original photo. So ultimately, I have found this tool pretty useful, and I think it's a great addition to Lightroom, but I don't think it's going to be replacing Photoshop for me anytime soon. There are some glaring problems with it currently. However, for simple removal adjustments on defined textures, I think it can do a really good job. I would love to know what you think in the comments below if you've tried using this tool. But with that, I'll catch you back here next time.